Hey, how's it going, everyone? Hope you guys are all having a wonderful day today. I know, anyways, if I look a little bit off from my eyes, bro, I just got done watching. I just got done watching a comic I kill. It, it, it was sad. Um, you know, video coming out on that later. So we're here to react to the Smith plays. We've got the nice little face cam. We're gonna go straight onto YouTube. Look at that first one right here. 34 fucking minutes. I right, let's watch it. My name is Samantha. I'm going to tell you how all this really began. Every journey begins with a single step, and Origins was step one in the greatest zombies arc ever told. Origins released August 27th, 2013, as the finale to the Black Ops 2 zombie series and the final old gen console map to be released from Treyarch. Since its inception, it has been That is true. It was the last the, the last old gen of the most critical last old gen map. I didn't even Origins think about was that. An ambitious and expansive title, delivering more content than any zombies map had ever scene. It sets up the Black Ops 3 storyline, introduced our new, old characters, and solidified the quest-style map as the modern zombies format. As far as gameplay goes, it made waves with tons of new content, like four wonder weapons and an extremely mm. complex easter egg. Origins is so loved by the community that many people even tend to put it above criticism. And despite being a masterpiece, Origins is actually held in a little bit too high of a regard. That is to say, just because it's fantastic doesn't no, mean no, it's perfect. No, 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 the and Smith so plays? Shut the fuck up! It is the most perfect map to have ever lived in, ever. It's perfect, and if you disagree, then you should be dead. Always today in Zombies Retrospective, we will be taking a critical approach to our review and not just looking at the good and amazing, but also the bad and ugly of Origins. <sighs> hey, what's up? Yo, okay, okay, I'm sorry, but why the fuck did this kid look? He's fucking orange. Sponsored by Raycon earbuds. The Raycon Everyday E25 is a high quality earbud. Raycon actually sent me a pair to try out over the last week. And so they wanted me to say what I actually genuinely think about them. Overall, I have to say they're a very solid earbud. The main thing I noticed is that they're extremely portable. The charging case is small enough to easily fit in your hand or pocket, so they're great to take around with you. But the main reason I use wireless earbuds is for working out, which I also found them to be really good. First of all, they're sweat resistant, but trust me when I say this, that these things do not come out of your ear. <laughs> I will say in my experience that I find them to run a tad bit bass heavy, but depending on your preferences, especially with your taste in music, this would actually be ideal for you. Also battery wise, the earbuds on their own will last for around six hours, but with the charging case, it'll go a full 24. I never even came close to having these die on me. And so if that sounds interesting to you, you can go to buyraycon.com forward slash Shut the fuck up. Off your up, people watching this on our reaction channel. That's a thing now. And listen, it, it's cool. I get it. I'm, I'm not mad. But what I am going to say is there's like... 100,000 people out there watching who are currently unsubscribed. These videos take a long time to make. So when you're done watching Lex... Hi Lex, or whoever else you're watching react to this video, I just want you to go to my channel, The Smith Plays, and subscribe. Now with that said, <laughs> let's get it. Don't, 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 don't subscribe to him. Don't. The best place to start with the breakdown of this map is with the intro cutscene. If the Mob of the Dead intro is debatably the best cutscene of all time, <laughs> Origin... Seven old chimes in to introduce you to the new and improved tank Dempsey. For what is essentially the, Yo, this, the, the opening cutscene was so I fucking badass, bro. Battery, on God, heavy metal, a fan favorite character, and some fantastic cinematics. We've known these characters for almost five years now, but it's here where we see a different personality from the one-dimensional stereotype of Black <laughs> One. And as we see some amazingly choreographed moments, we then get to Rick Toffin as the four final meet. He's just finished dissecting who we would come to learn is Maxis. And keep in mind, this is the guy that just got control of the ether and buried. So players That's who true. the Transit Crew storyline would have quickly learned that this is again something new. And so it's in this first cutscene where the most solid foundation 
foundation is laid for future maps. Instead of brand new characters like with the Chaos Crew in Black Ops 4, we're introduced to six people we already know, but they're different timeline versions of themselves. Craig Houston and the writing team at Treyarch reimagined these characters perfectly. They're so fresh, but familiar. Now, today's episode is going to get a bit crazy. Origins has a heap of content, and because so much of it is brand new, we have to cover it mm. all. So it's gonna be long, and I will break this video up into a few sections. First, we'll look at atmosphere and setting, then innovation and gameplay from the perspective of the casual player. Then we'll dive into the Easter egg, and lastly, and so we'll take a look at the story. The quest works because the two are so connected. But Origins isn't like this. In Origins, the devs decided to give the player more freedom. You can choose not to pick up a single staff part, and this makes the map more free than mop. The problem with this method, however, is that the storyline is shoved in your face no matter what you choose to do. Again, even if you don't do anything. And I think that this does detract from what Origins is just a little bit. Origins is a battlefield on the western front of World War I, and at times the setting feels underutilized. The actual setting of a confusing war-torn countryside feels hijacked as soon as Samantha starts speaking. She takes hold of the narrative completely by round four, and anything to do with this being an interesting battlefield seems to be lost. The map structure becomes one- Just fucking ignore Samantha. What the fuck? The of the map. Oh, and did I mention that there are 1,000 feet tall robots? I don't give a fuck about your fucking ad! The robots are one of the most ambitious and map-defining elements of Origins, and their atmospheric contribution is blended perfect with the gameplay. They serve to create a sense of grandiosity, and by the way, did I mention that this was on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3? And lastly, it's also worth noting that Origins has one of the best soundtracks to any Zombies map ever. Locations all have different backgrounds, so riding the tank or being in the crazy place Dude, picking up the Rocket Gen 2 and bringing it to the church altar can simply be a fun side quest. You simply need to cleanse it with melee kills, return it back to its place without stepping in mud to get the G-Strike, a monkey bomb like Ordens Strike that has the- Hold up! Fire Hold up! On this is fucking Black Ops 3! You really thought you could trick me? Uh, I feel cheated right now. Like, I, like, what the fuck? Often regarded above mob. Mob is linear, where Origins is completely open ended. But of course, you can go even deeper with Origins by upgrading the staffs. Once you've crafted your staff, or even all four, you can choose to ultimate them. Each elemental staff has a crazy place puzzle, an overworld puzzle, and then a color wheel spinning puzzle in the main chamber. After zapping the staff's respective orb, you must then charge it with kills in the crazy place. And while it is a lengthy process, the map delivers. The ultimate staffs are not only some of the most iconic, but also some of the best wonder weapons in all of Zombies. <sighs> they have a single blast, which is basically an improved version of the elemental shot. The trigger can also be held down for a devastating charge blast. Plus, they work as melee weapons and revive tools, with the back end being capable of instantly picking up teammates. While amongst each other, the staffs actually are quite balanced, but they all excel in their own ways. The ultimate lightning staff, Kimmet's Bite, is the best safety weapon. Shooting at the ground will instantly kill anything in front of you, but the charge shot is the weakest of the four. It shoots this orb of what is essentially a weaker wonder walk shot, and it's really only capable of killing a few zombies. This is a fair balance as to how friendly the normal shot is, though. Also, it's incredibly effective at killing the Panzer. And as a side note, I think it's the coolest because when you shoot it, thunder can be heard. So overall, it's just a beautiful wonder weapon. And lastly, it's also worth noting that it has the most ammo at 190. Eight. Now, the Fire Staff is the most balanced of the four. Its normal shot isn't quite as fast to kill as Lightning, but its charged shot is significantly better. It spews magma on the ground and is able to kill zombies in the small area where the magma sits. Hard. Beginners so players First of all, gravitate. Origins takes an insane level of knowledge and understanding. To even beat it, you need to remember 15 possible dislocations, know how to get 12 staff parts along with building the shield, Max's drone, and fighting. Okay, I know how to do most of that stuff. I know how to build the staffs i know most of the dislocation or all of the dislocations i know how to build the gramophone maxis drone eh, i don't think i uh, i rarely ever build the maxis drone or more like remembering where you put the gramophone there's also knowledge required for the staff upgrades like the crazy place wind staff hey hey, hey, hey. 
If I ever need to upgrade my stabs, okay? Check it. Look, you see? I have all this shit on my phone. I don't know if you can even see it or not, if it's in the frame, but I have all the upgrade. The upgrade things on my phone, at least the important things for upgrading. Fuck, dude. I am a fucking virgin. Holy shit. Please remember which way every single switch goes for lightning, along with the piano step, which is 136357246. That number is etched into my brain permanently. And that's just scratching the surface. Mm. There is so much to memorize for this egg that it might be harder than some courses you'll take in high school. But that Facts. is the difficulty factor. Origins is hard. Jason Blood and I'm himself, hard myself right now. This map has stated that Origins is one yo, of the Adam, Adam, ever. And Adam, hey, yo, Adam, watch out, Adam! <laughs> Guys, I totally did not stop recording yesterday when I was 28 minutes, 33 seconds into the video and then started to sleep. And it's totally not the next day now. That definitely did not happen. When I play Mob, I think this is the greatest zombies map of all time. Yet when I play Origins, I find myself saying the exact same thing. One map achieves greatness through depth and storyline and the other by depth in gameplay. Regardless though, they still achieve the same outcome. Origins and Mob sit as the foundational pillars as to which all maps after would sit on. And so because of that, I think to put one above the other is impossible. And so with that said, my final rating for Origins is a 9.7 out of 10. Double S tier. <clears throat> well, the one thing we could all take from this is um, Origins is the best map known to mankind. What's up, boys? Uh, Editor Vega here, and my face cam is isn't focusing. Fucking my fucking webcam is not focusing on me, bro. What the fuck? Anyway, so I forgot to say this in the video. Uh, please go subscribe to the Smith Place. This video is linked in the description down below. Show them some love, support. I don't know I'm saying this when I have no viewers. But yeah, you guys have a wonderful day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.